your father does not hate me. He just fears the souls in the underworld. He cannot see that they are already afraid. But I am their healer, and I must answer their cries for help, even if it displeases him. Oh, Senua, your father does not hate me. He just fears the souls in the underworld. He cannot see that they are already afraid. But I am their healer, and I must answer their cries for help, even if it displeases him. Possesses large dwelling places in hell. Her walls high are her gates. The name of her dish is hunger. Her knife is famine. On her threshold all will stumble. Her bed is called sick bed, and her bed hangings are called flames of a funeral pyre. They say she is easy to recognize. Half black.
before she first met him. She was not in a good place. Just a teenager, but not like the others. Barely functioning, she rarely left the house. Her father's in battle, made sure of that. Only occasionally did she venture out on her own. Collecting firewood and herbs. Errands out on the old meat plains. That was so wild. I like this one. Barren and lonely. And one day, Odin comes and thrusts a sword into the tree, a gift to whomever can release it. Many try, but the sword comes out, Sigmund's touched. His brother in law, King Sigir, wants it, but Sigmund refuses him. So King Sigir plots revenge. He invites Sigmund and his brothers to a feast. The army, not a warm welcome. Has covered its swords and readies them for execution. Death for Sigmund and his brother seems certain. But the king's wife is Sigmund's sister, and she begs for mercy and implores the king to chain them up instead. He agrees. Not for mercy, though, but because he plans an even more cruel, lingering death. 
chained to a tree in a forest that night, a she-wolf comes and devours one of Sigmund's brothers. She returns, ravenous, night after night, until only Sigmund is left. The next day, Sigmund's sister sent a serpent with honey to smear on Sigmund's face. But to what end? Well, that night, when the she-wolf appears again, you'll never guess what happened. What's your name? Senua. I haven't seen you before. I'm not... I don't leave home much. Oh. Zeno's daughter. I have to go. Wait! Who taught you to fight like that? No one. Well... I... I watched you. Come watch. The one who is supposed to reassure you. Make you feel safe. You know, it takes an instant. Fear swallows you before you have a chance.
Believe it. Is it not real? Is it there? You're alone in these mountains. Is that silly? Nothing lives here. Won't survive. <laughs> you met him in my tree. She met him in my tree. Maybe it's a sign. The tree. What's he trying to tell you? He's waiting for you by the tree. After his escape, Sigmund lives like us, hidden in the forest. His enemy, King Sigir, believing him dead, as his sister plots revenge. And for vengeance to succeed, even the great Sigmund needs help. So she sends her sons to him. But their blood is weak and corrupted, and they're put to death by Sigmund. So his sister hatches a new plan. One that is cold of heart and pure of blood. But the angry dwarves cursed it, 
it would be the death of a man every time it was drawn. It's so strange that we go to such like She's a woman. You remind me of a story. Her name is Terva, the daughter of a berserker born after he was killed. She's a wild, willful child who teaches. Lillian, I'm here. I'm here for the trials. Like when we first met, remember? There he is. There he is. Dillian, there he is. Finally. We found him. What's wrong? What happened? Can you hear me? How did you know to go Just wait there. Don't touch the walls. You don't know what the walls are. Did you hear that? Nothing. Was it the voices? Is that his voice or the voices? Father, after passing through these ghostly fires, 
as though they were mist. The flames I passed through were real enough. Damn the Northmen to hell. It's not him, it can't be. What's that sound? The voice is changing. What? <laughs> That's not Tian. That sound. Within the burial mark, Hever calls on her father to wake from death and bring her his sword. She says that it is not seemly for the dead in their grave minds to bear valuable <laughs> weapons. Her father answers with words of warning. You go to your doom. Baleful ruins surround you. You have gone mad. You have lost your mind. Your thoughts are confused. It is dangerous to wake the dead. Like I said, she reminds me of you.
terror calls on her father to wake from death and bring her his sword. She says that it is not seemly for the dead in their grave minds to bear valuable weapons. Her father answers with words of warning. You go to your doom. Baleful runes surround you. You have gone mad. You have lost your mind. Your thoughts are confused. It is dangerous to wake the dead. Like I said, she reminds me of you. It's not doing. Herford disguises herself as a man to join in a band of warriors, and soon becomes their leader. When they come to the island where her father was buried, her men do not want to go ashore. They say that evil haunts the island, and that it is a worse place by day than other places are by night. Fearless, she lands alone. There are many grave mounds, and all of them have ghostly flames burning over them. She comes to grave mound of her father after passing through these ghostly fires as though they were mist. The flames I passed through were real enough down the north into hell. Herver ignores her father's warnings. The grave mound opens and it seems to be full of fire. Again, Herver demands her inheritance, but her father warns her that the sword is and would be the bane of her family. But he relents and brings her the sword. She leaves the island with it. But the curse holds true, and death would follow in the years to come. And so, Zenoa, the misdeeds of a father have cursed his daughter.
Perrin disguises herself as a man to join a band of warriors, and soon becomes their leader. When they come to the island where her father is buried, her men do not want to go ashore. They say that evil haunts the island, and that it is a worse place by day than other places are by night. Fearless, she lands alone. There are many grave mounds, and all of them have ghostly flames burning over them. She comes to the grave mound of her father after passing through these ghostly fires as though they were mist. The flames I passed through down the hell.
Apaga. I'm leaving. I've decided. I think it will be good for me. It's the darkness. It's speaking through you. No, Dad, it's me. I think I can beat it. In my own way. I can see the darkness in your eyes, child. I met a boy. Boy? The chief no. He said he could help me. It's a trick. He said I could be normal. Normal? Yes. No boy is going to have a rot growing inside you. No. They will turn their back on you. The gods can only fix you through my hand. You're going nowhere. No. You will not defy the gods. Come, child. Take my hand. Come. Stand up. No! I am leaving! You cannot escape the darkness. Your curse will make everyone suffer. You will have blood on your hands! It's done. You did it, but there's more. There's more.